conceptual people talk about all of the elements. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Hello, everybody. It's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Uh, I'm going to be as brief as I can uh, with this particular segment. You saw the intro. Uh, once again, we are in the middle of a fundraiser. The work we do uh, precedes us. Uh, just check out some of the videos. Just read some of the articles. Read some of the books. Look at the work we do on the website. Uh, look at the work we do in the community. Uh, look at the things that if you've watched 10% uh, of the 2300 videos on here, you see the contributions I make on so many different levels. I need you to support the work we're doing. The think tank, the research center, the programs we have for actually in the community from domestic violence, racializing young black males, uh, mental health, housing, so much more. We need your support. Click the link and donate. Uh, now, I have done a couple of videos uh, to express my deepest concerns, uh, my well wishes and sentiments uh, toward DeMar uh, Hamlin and his family. Uh, some of the things that I didn't like, I've addressed. Uh, but now it's time to speak my truth. Maybe nobody cares. Maybe most people are just ready to get back to usual. But I'm going to tell you what. It's, it's not one thing that that situation that happened on that field Monday night did for me. Uh, but it definitely refocused me and put me in a mindset of being appreciative, number one, and grateful for my life. Appreciative for the opportunity to touch lives. But also the responsibility of speaking truth. The responsibility of standing on the right side of the line and being there when history reviews your position, you wanna be on the right side of the line. And so I hear all of the well wishes and I think it's exceptional. I've already said, I, I think the outpouring of true, what I believe to be genuine and authentic sentiment uh, for this young man is extraordinary. Uh, it brings joy to my heart to see us express that type of care and concern. Um, while we're doing that, and I don't want that to stop. I don't want to lose that. I want that to be the way we feel, but I want it to be the way we feel after he pulls through, because I'm speaking that. I'm speaking that with every ounce of me. After he pulls through, after he recovers, I, I want us to maintain that sentiment because life is still short. Uh, the brevity of life is still real. I want us to keep that. But here is my challenge to the NFL, to its owners, to the NFL Players Association. Here's my challenge. It's time to do the right thing. 
the most dangerous sport, the most dangerous profession, some might say hockey, uh, but bearing out and looking at what's going on, the NFL is a gladiator's ring. And people come and they get mangled, they get hurt, they have short-lived careers. And the compensation package, the disability packages, the pension packages are trash. You're not taking care of these men. Um, I, 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 I heard, I didn't hear, I read let me, let me, that over 60% of the claims for CTE uh, of players who have legitimate diagnosis of CTE, uh, their families are filing claims and 60% of those haven't been paid out. The new threshold for paying out disability period is below 15% of all applications. It's time to do the right thing. Uh, you got to be 55 to even draw a pension. You got to pay up, if I'm not mistaken, at least four to five years before you're eligible for a pension. And then you got to wait until you turn 55 to draw it. I think that we need to look at this. The, the world's most dangerous sport is the one sport that has no guaranteed contracts on a regular. Now you're getting these quarterbacks, the least likely of which to get hurt. Now, we've seen some of them get hurt significantly and severely as of recent. And so I'm not diminishing who they are, but I'm saying the people who get the most guaranteed money are the ones who are least on the line. They are the most protected player on the field at all times. They're getting the most guaranteed money. And they're getting guaranteed money not because it's about their financial stability. They're getting guaranteed money to solidify their positions with teams because they generate revenue. We need to keep this real. This is about money. And one thing that what happened to DeMar on that field Monday night showed us that this thing is bigger than that and that we need to be treating it like that. These people are showing up. Are we going to really keep it real? They get paid a lot of money to play that game, but it's for the entertainment of people. Do, do you get that? You're being paid to entertain people, and people get paid to entertain in a lot of different ways. They play instruments. Uh, they, they, they tell jokes. They do movies. Uh, and th they do all kinds. Of, but when you talk about you're paying somebody to step into a ring and punch somebody, you're paying somebody to step into a ring and body somebody, to jump 30 and 40 inches in the air constantly over and over again and not thinking about the wear and tear of their bodies. And, and, and in football, you're talking about some of the most violent collisions you can ever imagine. And you're, and you're looking at people like Earl Campbell, who, uh, when he played, was a juggernaut. But his body, it took a toll. You look at people like Junior Seau, who was, by all stretches, phenomenal athlete, totally banged up by CTE to the point he takes his life. Aaron Hernandez, CTE. They say the worst case they've ever seen for somebody that had been in football that short period of time. He does all kind of crazy stuff that's inexplicable for somebody that just signed an unbelievable contract that's life is on the fast road to just being phenomenal. Totally off the chain. This isn't making excuses. This is talking about reality. People's lives are exploding by, from, from, from the ramifications of playing this game and there's no safety net for them. People are crashing, falling, burning, and we're not doing anything for them. And, 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 and I heard on a sports talk show that it's part of the NFL Players Association's uh, it's part of their fault. Well, in, 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 to a certain degree, it's on, it's on both parties. To a certain degree, it's on both parties because you should never be negotiating to get one thing to where you are putting somebody. It's no way we should be down to, what is it, $3,000, $2,500 in disability for somebody who made uh, an organization billions on an average. Yeah, some players are worth a lot more, some players are not. But I think that if you put your life on the line, I think everybody's life is equal. 
because you played a position that made you more popular or you played a position that everyone deems more skillful doesn't change the fact that every day I walk out here and I put my life on the line. If that has no 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 echelon to it. That has no uh no no tier system to it. I'm out here putting it on the line every day like everybody else. I think players need to have a standard disability that is arbitrated by someone else other than the NFL. I think that players need to be taken care of. If they're injured in the game, they need to be taken care of. And it shouldn't require people at a table negotiating about lives, longevity, and health of men whose talents are the one that puts the product on the field that makes these elite wealthy people more wealthy. It is time for the NFL to do what's right. It's a bunch of BS that's been going on forever. And we understand. We understand when you got ownership that's on an average up in the high 60s, low 70s, that's the average age of the people who own these teams when you put them all together. You got to understand there's a lot of old thinking going on. There's a lot of old behavior that needs to be shaken from the tree. There needs to be some new blood, some new air. We understand all that. Right now, we need to talk about what's doing right. Major League Baseball, guaranteed money. Major League Basque, I mean, uh, uh, the NB National Basketball Association, guaranteed money. And you're talking about a sport that's extremely more violent than both. And you got to play to get paid in most instances. This young man, if he's un unable to come back, he's collected his last check as an NFL player, does not qualify for a pension. And depending on who's arbitrarily looking and, and determining, uh, may not even qualify for disability, but as he does, you're talking about... Uh, 2500 to 2000 3000 that's not going to take care of him if he if he's required to have extended long term care we're hoping that's not the case we're hoping that he fully recovers we're hoping that he's even able to come back if he desires to and do this thing again but 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 but, but what we've got to talk about is what you've been doing and how you've been handling it see for every NFL owner if you die tomorrow you got generations that are going to be okay because of the wealth you hold. You got these young men out there putting their lives on the line, trying to build that, trying to have a piece of it, just a piece of it. You take everything they have and then you toss them aside and plug in the next person. I don't want to hear any more shit about next man up. Everybody life's count. Everybody life. Everybody's life counts. And the time out for sitting around and pretending everybody's look like i said i absolutely love the fact that prayers are going out i love the fact that no matter what your faith is no matter how you feel about it, i love the fact that people are extending their heart to this man and to his family to this situation to this what's going on i, I absolutely love that i want that to continue i want that to be a new norm that we care about life we care about what other people are going through i want this to try to shift how we but we need to be real about this there's a business side of this that it took an hour after all of that happened, it took an hour minimum for the league to make, a, make up its mind that those players weren't going to play, even though the players had already come to the conclusion that they weren't playing. The league is still trying to figure out how we're going to get the game in. It's about money. If, if, well, if it's about money, they need money too. They're putting their lives on the line. They're going through it. They're, they're risking it all. And now we're not even talking about body and limb anymore. We're talking about breath and life. We found that out, that it, 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 it is literally that dangerous. So here we are. It's time for the NFL. You shouldn't have to have lawyers and representatives and advocates and everybody coming up and standing up and saying, hey, this is what we're going to have to have in order to have this. And that. that should just be something that's right about it. The money's there. Greed is ruling the moves. Everything is a bottom line. I understand this is a business. But there comes a point in time that you just simply do right by people. You don't go push them back out there. They put their heart and their 
my, their lives on the line. And nobody's lining their pockets like NFL owners. You've got Goodell sitting at the helm. But this is a league of owners. And it's time for NFL owners to do what's right. This is, this is the challenge that I'm making. It's time for you to do what's right. I don't even know the brother who made this point first. But I admire his passion. I admire his courage. And he's definitely on a bigger platform than me. And his word's going to go out a lot further than mine. But I'm going to be on the right side of it because I've watched this for years. I've seen it up close. We've got to do better as a human race. But specifically, I'm speaking now to NFL owners, the NFL front office, the NFL Players Association. These men deserve guaranteed money. These men deserve a, a, a larger pension and an easier path to the pension and quicker path to the pension. And we they definitely need a stronger disability program that's going to make sure they're okay after putting so much on the line to play this game. Finally, I'm going to give you an idea of what this is. Everybody thinks when you think of a professional athlete, you see millions of dollars because that's what they parade in front of you. You see millions of dollars and you see, wow, these guys are paid, paid. Let me tell you what this young kid has made so far. In two years, now he's made more, way more than the average person, but the average person isn't putting their lives on the line at the level he is, obviously. But he got $150,000 signing bonuses and he, and he earns $800 uh, dollars a year. I mean, $800,000 a year. So ultimately, less than $50,000 a game. Again, people thinking that's when you're putting your life on the line. Number one is he's, he, he's still in a rookie contract. So he's not getting paid what everybody sees when they see these big numbers. And most of those numbers are quarterbacks and uh, top tier receivers and running backs. It starts going down significantly after that. But you got you got people, a bunch of people in the NFL that don't make a million a year. Now they make more than the average person, but their careers are short. They don't get, see what I'm saying is you're looking at the 800 he's making. He may not play for five years. This young kid may not play again. He may have collected his last check as a player because that money isn't guaranteed. None of it. He has to pick up a game check by paying a game. but they rolled him off the field in an ambulance. NFL, it's time to do what's right. To the players, it's time to demand what's right. It's time to stand strong and demand what's right. On that note, look, I'm gonna get ready to get out of here. Again, if you believe in the work we're doing, the fight that we're waging on so many different fronts, support the work we do. Uh, go to the description box, the post box, wherever you're watching this. Click the link and give. Or give by way of the organization's uh, cash app account. But whatever you do, support our work. We have so much more uh, that we want to do. We've been going at this for decades. Uh, I'm blessed. Uh, no matter what happens in this world, I'm blessed. But I'm challenged to stand up every day and march out and be a part of the right thing. And so, again, I'm challenging the NFL to do the right thing. On that note, I'm out here.